Hi, I'm Jody and welcome back to LPIC. We were speaking about the basic network troubleshooting in previous section. I talked about routing, pinging, routing problems, trace path and trace route. Now I will speak about some tools which are more uh, local. SS and Netestat are the first ones. Again, Netestat is the older one. If you are on Debian, I think, from the Net tools, you can install some of these tools. SS is the newer version. Netestat was more general, was used for checking routings, checking open ports, network status, statistics, and this kind of stuff. SS is a little bit more focused on connection checking. They can do lots of things. If you go with Netestat, Netestat can print network connections, routing tables, interface statistics, mass querying, mass queried connections, and multicast membership with lots of switches. Some of them are very, very common for us. For example, netestat-nr is for showing routes in a numeric model. Doesn't try to find the name of this machine. This is my routing table, which I changed in the previous section. I said 4224 should be go from this gateway. Whatever should go from here if you don't have any clue. And this one and this one with the net max and net masks and everything. Uh, you cannot do the same with SS because SS doesn't support routing. But many of the switches are the same. For example, if you want to check your network connection, you can go with netstat NA. Show active connections, numerical, don't do reverse lookup. It shows you all the connections you have in your computer. Start from here. You can see that I have some listening connection. So some processes are listening for connection. For example, on port 22, which is SSH, from any IP, my computer is listening for an SSS connection. Same for port 25, same for port 631, same on the TCP version 6, and I have some listenings on UDP ports. This means whatever IP which came. If I have something like uh, 127001 port, this means only listen from this IP. But this means listen from any IP. Ah, I have one here. And I have one established connection. These are listening. This is established. It says, this IP, Faragn address, from its port is connected to my computer, port 22. This is the SSH connection I have to this machine. So, netstat NA. Also, it shows Unix domain sockets. When programs want to speak with each other, they can use these sockets. So, I have lots of them. SS does the same thing. Numerical, I don't want reverse lookups. All active connections shows the same some differences in the how it creates the tables and everything these are the sockets these are the ones we saw on the previous part uh, one combination of the connection which is uh, switches which are very very common and we all know by heart is tulpen we pronounce it tulpen so you'll have it in your mind okay ss tulpen we're telling it, I want the connection informations, TCP, UDP, listening ones, which process is using it. Do not convert to the names and just show me the IPs to make it faster. So this is my status at the moment. Again, I have some UDP listenings. I have some TCP listenings, only the listenings. And these are the ports I'm listening to on TCP version 6 and TCP version 4. If you want to see what your computer is doing, this is very useful. Also, the netstat-na, you can do the same with ss, 
showing all the connections i will grab for listen sorry i can grab for established it says there is one established connection in my computer and that is from this machine to my machine on this specific port it's very common for us for example we have a system which should be connected for 12 different servers all of them are the same and i have to read whatever they send so this should show 12 connections although i have some other connections too but i can grab do extra grab with this specific port and see if i have this much connection on this specific port if not there is a problem and these kind of stuff so this is ss toolpen is very very common and useful switch it's good to know about another useful command is netcat uh, netcat is arbitrary tcp and udp connections and listens you can create listeners you can connect, connect to somewhere it's like a swiss army knife of tcp packets and udp packets you can do lots of things with it uh, let me run a tmax so we can split the window wow you can say netcat listen to this specific port now i have a tcp connection listening here you can even check it with ssl toolpen here we are listening on whatever connection from any server to this port and it says the user is nc this is because of the p shows which process is listening so I can say even again the telnet localhost to this port. I, I'm connected to this connection. Cool. This will uh, escape the telnet so I can give commands and Q will exit. Or I can do with NC. I can do NC. I want a connection to the local host on this port. I'm not listening, I'm connecting. Here I was listening. Oh, this. Very nice. The, uh, even on the, I'm not older version or different versions of NC, we used to have one dash E switch would say, whatever you got, run it with this. So when you were doing nc-e this-l listen to this and connected to the same connection, whatever you typed here would go and run with bash. It's like a poor man's backdoor. It was very fun. Nowadays, it's not there anymore for obvious reasons. <laughs> At least not as a default. So this was the netcat. You can create connections. You can listen to the connections. If you are in a network in your job, and you should receive a connection from someone else and that admin says, no, I'm sending, you are not getting it. Your program is not working. One way is, okay, bring down your program, do an nc-l on that port and say, please send your request now. And you will see here if anything comes or not. Very useful. This is what you needed for LPIC, but I've added a couple of more commands like dig dig checks for the dns i say dig google.com it goes to the google.com says i'm using this server as my dns server and this is the answer i've got back from google dig helps you to troubleshoot the dns issues another two useful commands are tcp dump and it's little cousin TCP flow. It's like NC in the way that it shows the connections. In NC, we were opening a listening port and was using it to see if anything comes. TCP flow can show any data on your network. It's called TCP, but it also can show UDP. It has lots of switches. 
does lots of things, but it's very good for a quick troubleshoot. TCP dump is a more complete one. It saves the data in a specific format. You can read them later, see any single uh, request or packet you've received, you've sent. When we have very, very, very complex issues, which we cannot solve, I do a TCP dump on the servers as a background process, keep all the communications. Later, I can say, okay, on that time, you said you didn't receive my packets. Let's check our TCP dump. You can see that I've sent you this, you gave me back this answer, so it's your problem. Let me show you a quick TCP flow. TCP flow. You can give it lots and lots and lots of uh, data what to do. Normally, it will save the data, switches to what to do. Normally, it saves data in an XML file. Dash C will type on the console. So if I run it just like this, it says you need to be root to listen to everything. Okay. It is showing whatever going on on my, on my network. Not understandable that much. So I can say I need only port 80. Just show me whatever happens on port 80. By default, it's listening my, to my Ethernet. You may need to change this. Now if I do a curl to google.com, you know curl will contact google.com on port 80 as a web server and we'll get back the answer from the Google's web server. So let's try. Oh, something happened. Because I said port 80, I'm listening to destination 80 and source 80. I could say destination 80 to just listen to destination ports. It says, okay, TCP flow listening. From this machine, which is my machine, and this port, I've saw a connection to this machine, this port. The connection said, get HTTP, blah, blah, blah. Get the first page of the google.com. From this machines, same, port 80, I got an answer. It says permanently moved. Please do blah, blah. This is the HTTP protocol. We are not going to cover it. But the simple fact is it says, okay, we've moved to somewhere else. Please try www.google.com instead of the Google. So it's sending me here. As soon as I reach there, it says, okay, we are moved to HTTPS. I say, okay. But you can see that how TCP flow showed me that I'm having some network activity on port 80 on my own machine. You cannot do this on other people's machine or in the whole network unless you've done some poisoning or something. I don't have a CH in English, but check CH or, okay, check the CH. There are, there are ways to route the traffic toward yourself. Use it ethically. So it's done. I believe these two were very fun. Hope you enjoyed them. Sorry they were long. I will be happy if you follow, tell your friends I'm creating this for free because I'm enjoying them and I want to have advertisement. For them. So please watch and tell your friends.